we continue our series of Meet the Manager videos today as we're joined uh, by Rob and Marshall Lee from Newton. Um, Rob leads up the emerging and Asian equity teams at Newton um, and has been the, the lead portfolio manager um, on the global emerging market strategy since it was launched um, back in 2011. Um, Rob, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we added the, uh, the Global Emerging Markets Fund to our recommended list at the back end of last year. Um, and it's clear from the portfolio um, that there are some notable differences between um, the portfolio and, and that of the, the benchmark index. Um, so I wondered if to, to kick off, if you could just run through the investment objectives of the fund um, and the kind of differentiating features of the process that you use. Thanks. Um, so I guess the, the key thing is for us, we're very aware that the benchmark in emerging markets has got some really good bits and some really bad bits. Uh, so we find little point in constructing an index around that benchmark. Um, instead, we're trying to zero in on the, the best growth opportunities available in emerging markets through good quality companies, um, rather than throwing good money after bad. I don't think we reduce our risk by holding more Chinese banks, for example. You increase your risk. Um, there's, there's clearly very strong growth potential in certain parts of emerging markets, at, at the very least, dramatically better than most of the developed world. Supportive de uh, demographics, much lower credit penetration. Um, but there's a lot of companies where that value leaks out because they're not really run for all shareholders. So we're very focused on corporate governance. We want companies where the value stays in the business, where it gets wisely reinvested into those growth opportunities. Uh, and basically, we're looking to compound our returns into those growth opportunities so strongly cash generated businesses, strong balance sheets, superior corporate governance to keep the value in, and you get that snowball effect. Um, we don't see that everywhere in emerging markets, um, but there are some fabulous opportunities. Uh, in that context, we invest with a five year plus investment horizon. So we're not gonna chase all the gyrations in the market. Uh, we will lag certain rallies if it's a load of Chinese banks that we wouldn't touch with a barge pole. You know, I wouldn't put my money into them, why would I put your money into them? Um, so instead, we're zeroing on those, those best opportunities, be it uh, Chinese internet companies, Indian consumer, wherever we find those compounding opportunities, that's what we're looking to invest. Sure. And so kind of long-term and, 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 and thematic approach is quite key to the, the starting point of, the, mm. of this strategy. I wondered if, um, to give us an example of, of, of one of those the key themes that you're currently playing in the portfolio. Um, yeah, so one example would be um, Earth Matters. You know, the, the world is becoming increasingly environmentally aware. Um, we don't then just take a theme and just buy every box, you know, stock which ticks a box there. We're trying to find where are we going to actually turn that into capital appreciation. Where is that company going to make very good profitability and be able to reinvest into that growth to compound its returns? Um, and so an example of that is um, in uh, electric vehicles. Uh, we see very, very clear shift to electric vehicles. Um, and this is really to meet CO2 obligations in, uh, in Western Europe. But also places like China uh, are clearly trying to get um, their auto OEMs competitive with the rest of the world and sort of out a pollution problem in China. Uh, so we, we very clearly see on a, you know, over the next five or ten years a, a very big shift into electric vehicles. Uh, and in that kind of context, um, we see a huge opportunity for the right companies to benefit from that. So uh, Samsung SDI in uh, electric vehicle batteries has got the best battery technology. It's just going through break even. It's going to be 25 to 30 percent of the value of our car going forward. It's a huge shift in the the auto supply chain, uh, and they're in a very very good place to monetize that. So we expect them to make great returns with huge growth over the the next five or ten years, whereas the market tends to look at the next 12 18 months when considering that that share evaluation. Uh, the same is true of lithium. You know, I first bought a company called SQM in in Chile, has 30 percent of the world's lithium. I, I first bought it in 2011 because we're using our themes to look forward to understand those future opportunities. So we saw very strong returns and across the board, across the global markets really last year, and emerging markets was no different, above average returns and yeah. achieved. The start of this year has been more challenging, mm. much more volatility in markets, perhaps driven by expectations on US monetary policy or US trade policy. Um, uh, and, 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 and ongoing debate about valuations. Um, I wonder, given the, the market returns so far this year, it, it has, has your outlook for, for emerging markets changed at all? No, not really. I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of noise around trade and things like that. We don't see it being a, a big issue. Um, China did stimulate its economy for a couple of years. It's likely to kind of slow at the margin, um, but we tend to be more in structural growth areas of China, so in education, healthcare, things like this, where actually the the growth path is, is very robust. Um, so the, the share price can get thrown around a little bit in the short run, but we don't see a big issue. Um, 
emerging markets as an asset class are, are really playing catch up. So for a, you know, a few years, uh, the currencies particularly got depressed, so they got oversold. So you're buying an asset class where the currency is cheap and the underlying equities are cheap, particularly if you look at through the cycle measures, such as the Schiller P ratio. You know, the US market's done this, emerging markets have got really left behind. So what we've seen is the first part of the catch up, but there's still a, a very long way to go. And, and so we still think um, emerging market equities broadly a very good value against US equities, against um, uh, bonds in particular. And, uh, and you know, if inflation picks up for virtuous reasons, that's a really good thing for emerging markets. You know, global trade, more robust. Uh, commodities are, you know, less weak. Um, we're not huge bulls on commodities, but certainly um, it's going to be less of a headwind going forward. And so, so we touched on themes. Maybe if you drill a bit deeper into the into the portfolio and, and maybe look at one of the uh, one of the other kind of high conviction holdings in the portfolio. If you if you were to pick one and, and explain the, the investment rationale behind behind that. Oh, there's so many. Um, I, I mean, I think we're very optimistic about um, India. Um, we still got around 25, 26% in India currently. Uh, we've been particularly focused on the Indian consumer. Uh, India has very, very strong uh, growth dynamic from the population growth. Uh, you've just come out of a recession, so it's a very early cycle, unlike a lot of other parts of the world. Very low credit penetration, so if you look at mortgage penetration to GDP, it's w well under 10%, whereas in the UK it's 90% plus. Uh, so all of that credit penetration is, is for the future. Um, and Modi is doing a great, great job in terms of economic reforms, which are, which are teeing things up. So in that kind of context, the uh, you know, more buoyant consumer, the, the underlying growth just starting to accelerate. Um, things like consumer discretionary companies, it could be jewelry or uh, pizzas, uh, car companies. Um, so for example, Maruti Suzuki is one of our larger positions. It's been a fabulous stock already. Um, but car growth is, is you know, I think we're talking 18 per thousand people in India versus five or 600 per thousand people in, in the UK. There's a very, very long growth path ahead for us. So Maruti would be uh, one of those. Um, the, uh, the Indian financials as well, you know, mortgage penetration, but the, the companies selling these uh, have 20, 30% loan growth year on year on year, sustainably, uh, and at very high ROEs as well. So um, in some of the, uh, the mortgage companies look very good. You mentioned um, in, in the first question um, uh, the, the, the look at corporate governance in emerging markets. And I know this is a, a topic which um, puts off actually some investors from investing in certain mm. areas entirely. Um, and I know ESG or environmental and social governance factors are, are kind of a key part of the process as yeah. well. I wondered if how that all works together in, in the process. Just maybe if you could touch on that. Um, it's a clarity of vision. I mean, we know what we're trying to do, what we're not trying to do. So we're not trying to slavishly chase these rotations in the market from Russian gas companies into Chinese banks and back again. Um, we know we want the, uh, the companies that keep the value in the business that treat us well. Uh, as I say, we're not looking for perfection here. We're just looking for good enough corporate governance that the value stays in the business and hopefully improving. You know, we engage with the companies to do that. Um, so how we do that in practice is, uh, is kind of threefold. So we have career global analysts, uh, so they're helping with our stock picking as well as that done on the team um, who are thinking about those things when looking for companies. We have an independent ESG team, so they're experts in ESG. They will write a report on uh, the E, the S and the G for every analyst recommendation. Uh, and they are an independent point of expertise for us to go and patch into. So I was looking at a, a Chinese company that produces cobalt in the DRC. I thought cobalt would do quite well with electric vehicles. But the corporate governance is just a nightmare, and we just don't trust the company to, to do the right thing, so we steer clear of it. Um, and, uh, and the third thing is, is my team. You know, we have a very, very clear understanding of the attributes we're looking for in every company, and minority shareholder protection is the first question we ask of every investment. Uh, and that, that immediately rules out probably three quarters of the in, uh, index for us, because those are the companies where they don't really care about you. you know, if you're a, a Chinese bank or a, a Russian oil company, shareholder value is kind of somewhere down here in their list of considerations. So it doesn't stop them doing, you know, having a rally every now and then, but they'll kind of go violently sideways because they're not actually compounding value. So if you're looking for the companies who are actually making good capital allocation decisions, keeping the value in the business, not going into some oligarch's back pocket, it gives you a rather different perspective on, on where you need to be focusing your efforts. Rob, well, thanks very much for coming in to join us. Very interesting as always. Um, if you'd like any further information on the Newton Global Emerging Markets Fund, um, please contact your investment manager for a copy of our recent research notes. Thanks very much.